Hi, with me today is Janine Hansen, the Communications Director for the Science Museum of Minnesota, certainly one of the jewels in the crown of Minnesota. Janine, thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, the Science Museum was founded about just over 100 years ago, and it certainly uh, enjoyed tremendous growth. Um, you know, with the, the new exhibit spaces and uh, the Omni Theater, cafe, classrooms, can you tell me a little bit about the, uh, the exhibits? Well, that's right. We did celebrate 100 years of the Science Museum in 2007. And as we're moving into our 101st year, we have so many exciting things going on here at the Science Museum. Wow. We just opened a brand new exhibit called Animation. It's a fun, hands-on exhibit for kids of all ages. In fact, adults like it too. It's, mm -hmm. It features the characters from Cartoon Network. And it's all mm -hmm. about the science behind animation. In a couple weeks, we're opening another new exhibit called Deadly Medicine. It comes from the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, and it's uh -huh. all about eugenics. So a much more serious topic, kind of side by side with something hand in hand, really fun for families. We've got a brand new film showing in the Omni Theater. It's called The mm -hmm. Alps. Mm -hmm. It is all about a climber by the name of John Harlan III. Now, some people who are known, well known in the climbing community might think that's a familiar name because his father, John Harlan II, mm -hmm. was a world-renowned climber who died climbing the Eiger. In this movie, John Harlan III, his son, goes back as an adult to conquer this mountain that took his father's life. This summer, we're going to be bringing in something that I know people are really excited about. It's called Star Wars, where science oh. meets imagination. Yeah, so we are already getting calls for that. We have going on right now a priority ticket club where people can go to our website and sign up now to be mm -hmm. the first to buy tickets. And I think at last count, we had over 8,000 individuals who had signed up to buy Fantastic. advanced tickets to Star Wars. So that's- so people are excited about this. They are. <laughs> it's, it's gonna come in June to the Science Museum. Mm -hmm. And it's only gonna be here through the end of August, which is a pretty short run mm -hmm. for us. So I mm -hmm. think people are gonna wanna come often and come early to that right. one for sure. I heard it's the last the last stop on this, on this tour of this exhibit. That's right. Exhibit. After Star Wars is here at the Science Museum, it goes overseas, so I don't think it's something you're going to be able to catch again soon. The other really neat thing about this particular exhibit is that it features memorabilia, costumes, props from all six films in the Star Wars saga, mm -hmm. and those all six films have never been represented in one exhibit before. The museum is also involved in a lots of educational outreach. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things do you do for that? I mean, you're involved with educators and certainly with, with children in classes and whatnot. The Science Museum is actually the largest provider of professional development for teachers in the state. That means that we're wow. training the teachers who are in our elementary classrooms on how to be even better math and science teachers, hone up on their skills, share mm -hmm. ideas with each other. In addition, we welcome hundreds of thousands of school kids from mm -hmm. across the state to the Science Museum for field trips every year. Mm -hmm. And we go to them. In outstate mm -hmm. Minnesota, we have a traveling program where we will send Science Museum teachers out into the community in a van with lessons that they can bring to classrooms all across the state. I noticed you have a new addition, or well, somewhat new addition to the Science Museum, and that is the big backyard. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about that. Hopefully, spring is around the corner. Yeah. It's, it's I hear cold it's out. a month away, but oh I don't know if I believe it. <laughs> it's cold. But you actually hit on one of my favorite things here at the Science Museum. In the summer, we have a nine-hole mini golf course outside. We call it the big backyard. Really? It's right behind the Science Museum, and it's a lot of fun to play. And of course, it uh -huh. wouldn't be the Science Museum if we didn't have a strong educational component to that. Mm -hmm. So the big backyard mini golf course is also all about something that scientists mm -hmm. call Earth, sur Earth system surface dynamics, which is kind of a fancy word for talking about how water, um, what happens to water when it hits the land, whether it mm -hmm. runs off quickly, whether it soaks in, and what impacts that have on the mm -hmm. environment. So I just love getting out there in the yeah. summer and playing a little mini golf. What is, what is Collector's Corner? I heard something about that, and maybe kids can get involved in, in collecting. Mm -hmm. Collector's Corner is one of the most popular things that we have here at the Science Museum. Really? On an ongoing basis for a small group of people, and I would love to get the word out about this and have more people come and participate. It's in our collections gallery, so one of the permanent parts of the Science Museum, and it's a kind of like a natural history object trading post, if you will. So kids can bring in objects like um, pine cones or bird feathers mm -hmm. or stones, other things that they find in mm -hmm. nature, and they can bring it to the collector's corner. They're entered into our database, and they earn points. 
based on what kind of object they bring in, but even better, how much they know about mm -hmm. it. So you could bring in a very ordinary object like a pine cone, mm -hmm. but if a, a kid were to take the time to do some research and write up a report mm -hmm. about that pine cone, for example, pine cone, exactly what kind of tree, it, you, know. you got it, they get more points. Yeah. And what kids will do is they'll keep bringing more and more objects and they really save up and bank those points for some of the big items and then that they can trade up for. And it's all natural history items, like agates are really popular uh -huh. or um, occasionally there's a, like a shark's jaw or fossils, those sorts of things that are really popular. What a fantastic idea yeah. to get kids involved mm -hmm. in science and mm -hmm. in learning about taking those objects. I noticed your website is full of lots of interesting information mm -hmm. and I was surprised by the amount of activities for kids. Mm -hmm. um, What's the website address, by the way? It's www.smm.org. It's SMM for Science Museum in Minnesota. Minnesota. Exactly. SMM.org. Two M's in a row. Oh. Yeah, and we've actually just revamped our website, and it has a whole bunch of new content on there for kids and families, in addition to tips about planning your visit, mm -hmm. information for teachers. We will put things like um, family guides to exhibits mm -hmm. on there, a whole bunch of information that you can mm -hmm. download before you come to the Science Museum to make your visit as, as the best you can, and also things that you can do at home to follow mm -hmm. up and learn more. You know, I was also surprised uh, that the Science Museum is also involved in a lot of real scientific research behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. What sort of research have, have you, has, has the museum been involved in? Any successes? What current projects are you working on? Um, tell us a little bit about that. that That's another one research. of the big surprises of the Science Museum. We talk about the Science Museum of Minnesota, and again, people often think of this building and this place to come with their families, and that's absolutely what we want mm -hmm. people to do, but a lot goes on behind the scenes. We have active researchers in biology, paleontology, mm -hmm. anthropology, and um, even water quality research. Some mm -hmm. of the most exciting projects our, our, our scientists are working on right now are in paleontology. We have a lot of interesting research happening in that area about um, things like growth rates of dinosaurs, something that uh, scientists call histology, so looking at bone chips under microscopes and learning things about not just what kinds of dinosaurs existed way back when, but how they lived, and that's kind of the new frontier of paleontology. We also have scientists doing mercury research. And as you know, mercury is a huge environmental problem. And our scientists are looking at things like that they call sediment core samples, where they actually go down into the earth and look at the layers of the dirt to determine what kind of pollutants were in our environment at different times, and then help make predictions about what might happen in the future based upon that research. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Janine Hansen, thank you very much.